you, of course, as always. Um, but let's get into our next line of business here. What are you guys talking about? All Out. What are you guys' thoughts about All Out? It was in Chicago. Uh, Ruckus crowd. Did the crowd overtake the pay per view, or did they, were they able to let this one breathe? <laughs> oh, they let it breathe. They, yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. They, 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 oh. <laughs> I mean, I, I think all that, all that like crowd hijacking and stuff. I honestly, th- I honestly thought that was all going to be safe for Collision, and, and like Collision was going to be when everybody lets it all out, and then by the time the pay per view comes, but they're just going to enjoy the wrestling. I mean, as far as crowd reaction went, as far as going against Punk, that was only during the uh, the eight man tag with the uh, FTR and the Elite versus uh, Bullet Club mm-hmm. Gold, because mm-hmm. apparently in Chicago they they hate the Young Bucks, yeah. So, oh really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> they do. They, ever since the first incident occurred, which is funny because when Kenny uh, Omega had his match with Takeshita, he he got a regular reaction. They weren't like booing him like they were the elite with the um the young bucks, <laughs> which, yeah. which, which is which is kind of funny. But overall, uh, this um in in response to the the firing of one of one of their bigger biggest draws, you could definitely tell amongst everybody that that they. Everybody that was um competing on the card, they were de- they were actually determined because match quality wise, there were there were a lot of very yeah, good matches. Good matches. On this yeah. card. Um, I honestly mm-hmm. think that the uh, the match of the night was the um the main event with um Orange Cassidy and um, John Moxley. Mm-hmm. Um, if, strap match was good too. Yeah, oh yeah, and definitely the strap match with um Ricky Starks and um uh, uh, Brian Danielson was also a good one. Yeah. But uh, going back to Orange Cassidy and John Moxley, Orange Cass Orange Cassidy is going to be is going to be a star. With, with, yes. with, with, with this company, he's got a unique, got a unique gimmick. Uh, in ring, in ring wise, I mean, he's top notch. I mean, he had thirty one straight title defenses before before uh, succumbing to uh, uh, John Moxley. Um, you could definitely, you could definitely tell. Uh, you could honestly say that um, it was a good story told. Orange Cassidy like, is a pillar of yeah. the company, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and does he replace Jack Perry as that pillar? He he, did, he definitely he definitely easily. I mean, like I said, Easily. when they did that feud with the four pillars, Jack Perry was clearly the weakest one out of, out of the other three. So yeah, yeah. um, but the uh, <laughs> the main event was very Perry. well. It was done very well. I love the story. I also love the story that they told with uh, with uh, Orange Cassidy. Um, mm-hmm. that the, the fact that they're, they're making him more, now, of a, they're gonna make him more of a focal point. Um, now, did John Mal- does John Moxley need that title? Realistically, he doesn't. He, no. he doesn't, but like, he was—he was, he was, he was definitely a good, like at least a top person to. Uh, I mean, to end that title reign, and this is why I say it was mm-hmm. a good story because, like Brian just said, thirty title defenses in a matter of the last what six months or whatever, or however long he had the title, He's the or a year, He's or the I don't even know He's how many. Workforce. Exactly. I think it was. But, but this was the story. Yeah. But this was yeah. But this was the story they told that. This man has literally been grinding into the ground to the point where his finisher isn't as effective because his hands all busted up and everything. And mm-hmm. the fact that he had to face obviously someone as tough and top guy as John Moxley, how was he going to pull it off? And you know he was getting his ass beat majority of that match, and then to kind of highlight his skills and like the comeback and like the strength that he has. Um, was great storytelling, and you know, till the very end, he <laughs> still gave him like a, you know, in his own fashion, a little like eh, fuck you, like like not even a full blown, not even a full blown like. Yeah, he was like, because you know how he does his like little thumbs up. He was like, yeah. mm, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought it was great storytelling. Yeah, I yeah, I definitely wanted him to keep that title, especially after we had this whole like intercontinental thing, which we'll get into later. But um, to me, that run was great, and he's easily gonna be a top guy. And this is why where I say like size shouldn't matter when it's booked right, mm-hmm. you know, because you had this yeah, guy yeah, literally yeah. going against John Moxley all these other giants and still coming out on top. It's like, if you book them right and they have the skill set to show off size, shouldn't matter. That's why you got guys like him, Daniel O'Brien, <clears throat> even Jack Perry, I guess, but that can still be top guys and doesn't have to, have to necessarily be a whole like size thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, uh, so, absolutely. Uh, so the, so the show kicked off with um, the uh, ring of honor tag team uh, title match. Um mm-hmm. 
the Adam Cole and MJF were defending against um, Dark Order, which was a great which was a great op- opening match. Um, they kind of told a story with um, MJF got hit in the back of the neck with, with a yeah. chair, and he got taken out of the match for a little bit, and then then he oh, came wow. back down and then and helped them get the win. And then and then as he's walking up the ramp, uh, Samoa Joe was coming coming down for I his match, and he shoved the hell out of MJF. And then and he said that was to uh, that was yeah, an ode to NXT. NXT. Brooklyn. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, which is funny because when, when I was watching it at the time, I didn't think I, I, didn't, I wasn't thinking of, thinking of that until I seen mm-hmm. it on social media the little memes that they were doing. I was like, oh, yeah, 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 that was, funny. That was so <laughs> small. Just shoves the long shit term out of <laughs> very long term booking. So apparently on AEW, the, the, that's that's uh, MJF MJF's next feud now. This is Samoa Joe. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like that one. Mm-hmm. But no, that's that was. I mean, sounded like a good card. You had Luchasaurus beating uh, Darbin Alley. Uh, we had the re- Darby, Allen. Darby, yeah, Darby, Darby Allen. Darby he, Allen. Darby Allen. He's a pillar. You gotta get. You gotta get that right. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have a montage of all the names that Dan butchers. Darby <laughs> Allen. No, no, we're not. We're not doing that. We don't have the editing system. To do yes, that, we no. do. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the tapes. We don't. We don't we Give don't, me the tapes. <laughs> We don't well, have the, videos, the videos are on YouTube. All we gotta do is go on and then look, 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 watch every video. Yeah. Right down the top, right down the top we, we can do that, and then we can create yeah. a compilation. You guys would be some <laughs> sick wrestling bastards if you guys did that. Um, we had the return of Mero versus Powerhouse Hobbs. How was that match? Because I was interested in that. How did Mero oh, look? It was, it was a heavy hitting match. Um, oh yeah, what was like that? The <laughs> crowd during this match was hilarious. <laughs> Big meaty men slapping meat. <laughs> and, was that and a chant? What, yeah, that was a chant. There were so many meat, meat reference meat reference chants <laughs> during the match. Because, because they were beating, you know they were what's, beating the shit out of each other. You know what's funny? I couldn't make out what they were saying during the chant. I thought it was like, um, like we want mirror or something like that. But some of the chants, I was like, yo, I can't really understand what the hell. So if they were saying that, that's all. <laughs> like they, like they, like... they were all meat and beef references. <laughs> 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 so that, that, that's why it was, it was so funny. But but, but literally, mirror mirror powerhouse Hobbs, they really were beating the crap, beating the crap out of yeah. each other. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a it was a, a heavy hitting match. It was, it was physical. I'm, yeah, and you know what's funny is that powerhouse Hobbs. I'm like, this dude literally has had the shortest TNT run, but it's like, he's so, I don't know. He's, he's a guy that's big can go. And I don't know why he isn't booked better. Um, but besides that, the match was great. I honestly didn't know which way they were going to go. Obviously I think Miro needed it more just cause he's coming back and everything. Yeah, yeah. Obviously the feud's still going to continue. Um, uh, I, but obviously the, the signing, I guess, or the return of uh, Miss Lana or CJ Perry, CJ as Perry. we know her. Um, mm-hmm. She came out, helped him out, but apparently Meryl didn't want no help and kind of just walked out on her. I'm like, if they're already turning his wife against him. No, 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 no. no. What they're doing, what they're doing is what WWE didn't do. They didn't finish the story of of, of, of uh, Miro, Lashley, and Lana. So AEW is finishing the story. Now it's going to be Hobbs. Miro is looking at her like. They're just, they're just, something, like, they're just something to the Lashley exactly. for Hobbs. Uh, Hobbs. Miro's looking at her like. Yo, Come on now. I hope they don't do that. Last time I seen you, I you with Lashley. So, I maybe, hated or maybe, that. Or maybe they're doing. Or maybe they're doing some type of Macho Man Miss Elizabeth type thing. I hope that's what they're doing. If they, if they, if she's it, not it around, like whatever the case may be, whatever they're deciding, I hope it's that angle because we don't I mean, need a whole different dysfunction. It, it didn't make type. sense because she, like, it was like she was her first appearance, and she comes out to help her mm-hmm. husband, and he's like, and he hates her. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, how does that I make sense? I didn't forget that shit. <laughs> <laughs> we're, talking, nice. we're talking as TV characters. Yeah, that's the last time I, I remember what you did with the last meaty man. <laughs> <laughs> like that would be wild. If they, I hope they go in the Macho Man Miss Elizabeth route, where he's just like get over there or get over here, and that type of angle, and not some type Hon- of BS. Honestly, with this character on um, AEW, I don't think he needs her. So if she was gonna come back, I honestly feel she should have just been her own character. Obviously, their husband and wife, and no, they can't. You know, if, you, if you can recapture <laughs> of the original Lana Rusev, 
WWE trying to make her a wrestler. Like this. She doesn't need to be a wrestler. You're never gonna catch that magic. Happen. You're never gonna catch that magic again because because now we know that she's not actually like, CJ Perry's not actually Russian, correct? Yeah, yeah. Because no, she pulled off that accent so so well that I think people actually thought that she was she was Russian and they were going with that whole I'm no, I think his wife character. But she's now some it's, part it's of the... like humanized now that I don't think they can go capture that magic again. No, I'm just saying, like, if they wanted to do the whole, like, kind of like a Karrion Cross and Scarlet type thing, like, you know, they're married and they're put together. But oh, I don't know, she should starter, definitely come back. She should off, definitely like, come back as his manager if she's if he's coming back. Yeah, like, like that's the only role. We don't need her in ring. We don't need her to be a wrestler. She can take bumps. Like we know that she can do that part. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, maybe there's a little bit more interaction. But we don't need her. I don't, I don't want them to do that whole storyline like that. I don't yeah, want that. No. He deserves better than that. <laughs> like, yeah, just, like that's why he left WWE. Like he left. Yeah, I, yeah. you know what I mean. Like, mm-hmm. I, I just hope this doesn't right. bring him down to where, where he's, he's like basically again. gone, gone again. It's just like, dude, he, I like his redeemer character and like his promos, how he's been, like, my God, and this and this and that. I think they're, you know, kind of like. Is he speaking to the higher power? Is it exactly is it, type? Is it Vincent Man? <laughs> Definitely not that higher power because he didn't want me, him. Austin. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it was me, Austin. <laughs> yeah, I I just hope they whatever they're doing makes sense and isn't something really mm. stupid. Um, yeah. what was the other match? Um, after uh, Takeshka I, versus Kenny Omega, how was that? Um, it was a that was another hard hitting match. You know, um, Takeshka is a fucking animal. You can obviously tell the age difference. You know, as Kenny being the vet who has been in doing this for way longer, um, but this dude's young, fresh, and hard hitting, and. You know, obviously, it's. I think it's kind of like the little downfall of Kenny right now, and obviously creating a new star in Takeshita and everything. So, definitely a good match. Obviously, you got Don Callis there helping him and screwing over Kenny and everything. But <laughs> exactly again, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> literally. Yeah, they, Why does somebody really, check his pocket? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're really trying to. They're, they're trying to tell the story of uh, because apparently, since uh, Don Callis and Kenny Omega have split, I don't think. Kenny Omega has won a one on one singles singles yeah. match without Callis in his corner, and they're and they're like mm-hmm. holding true to that story. Mm-hmm. So, oh, okay. like Lewis said, you know, Takeshita, Takeshita is is a beast. Um, I love I love the finish of how they they put him over put Kenny put him over clean, you know, with mm-hmm. the with the um exposed knee strike that the Takeshita hit him with. Um, but yeah. the match, but the match was very was very solid solid throughout. I mean, with Kenny Omega, you're never gonna get a, a poor match performance, regardless. But um, to see Takeshita come out on top, uh, this feud is definitely go- going to con- going to continue. I honestly mm-hmm. don't think the feud is going to be over until actually Kenny Omega actually phys- physically gets his hands on Don, Don Callis. After that happens, then the yeah. feud is probably over. So, so, yeah. so is so is Don Callis like the million dollar man? Like he just has these 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 troopers, or uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan? He just has all these fighters. <laughs> yeah. And now, yeah. and now yeah. Kenny Omega's got to go through them, mm-hmm. or like MJF with all his. Uh... Gauntlets and whatever. Like, oh, you're gonna face this person. You're gonna face that's that pretty person. much. Uh, hopefully, they don't go that angle. But hopefully, it's just him and Takeshka, yeah. and they built Takeshka. Um, mm-hmm. But how do you guys? Uh, how do you guys feel about the strap match? Of course, with uh, Brian Danielson and uh, Starks. The call, the call the of it, the call the of it was good. Mm-hmm. And I know they had to pivot because of what happened with CM Punk. And this is and it was it was a it was a good pivot to obviously get Brian Danielson back. But when, Ricky you, but when you look at the yeah, Ricky, you know, Ricky Starks is uh, is on fire right now as, as a heel yeah. character. I mean, mm. when he was a bit, when he was initially when he was a baby face, um, it it was all right. But it's just that like you could tell by his like his personality, He's as a heel. And his swag. He's yeah. definitely a lot better as a heel. Um, having mm. um, ca- a, a big cast or a big bill with him with him now as a heater is is, de- is, de- is definitely a, a good look. But um, my only thing about the, about the match, and like I said, and like I said, because they had to pivot on the story, was the fact that it seemed it seemed like it was o- overly overly grotesque, and and, and there wasn't enough story to back it. Now they have been telling this story with, yeah. with uh, Brian Danielson and Ricky the Dragon Dean Steamboat that 
uh, together against uh, Ricky mm-hmm. Starks for like a for like a month, and then we got this match, then it would would have been perfect. But that's it just would have been a bigger payoff. It would have yeah, it would have been, been a bigger payoff. Uh, that's just that's just the only um, nitpick I would take from it. But as far as the match goes itself, I mean Brian Brian Danielson. Now, you know, now I'm going to ask this: Did, this, did Brian yeah. did Brian Danielson need the win? I think coming back, all, yes. Was, I think coming back from the injury, yes. Yeah. That's where and, I'm like, and that's where also, I'm like, and also how hot the Blackpool Combat Club is. And, right I, now. and I understand they're, they're trying to build. Rough. I heard that they're trying to build AEW Collision around Daniel um, Brian Danielson. There, like he's going to be the the main guy. I read that somewhere. Like they're going to try to build it around him going forward. But if of course, with the, hold up. <laughs> I, I mean, I think he, I think yeah, exactly. I think. He, I think that's he's going to be all right. I think that's he's going to be all right. The, that's the only issue. Can his, can his, bo- can his, can his body hold up? Yeah, I mean, you think, you think all these guys are getting up there. You got Kenny, you know, and it's not even that they're old. It's just they've been doing this so long. It's it's at the point where, like, the matches you know, are so like, hard hitting. <sighs> but even what they say, even like, how, um, even like how Cody said, like, the way he tore his pec wasn't, like, doing some crazy move. He literally went on a bench and was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <"Yo." laughs> nah, but you know, I mean, it's just like, I mean, the, it's like getting older. The run, especially the run he was on when he was doing all that stuff in the AEW. <laughs> so it was just like brutal match after brutal match. And it's like, yeah. that takes a toll on these guys, right? So, and I just felt like that was a point, with, especially with Ricky Starks, right? With the heater, maybe he's doing the Shawn Michaels uh, diesel thing with uh, <laughs> Big Bill, right? So, I mean, just from that standpoint and creating a new star, adding to his heel character. I'm like, maybe he should have got the win on that. But, I mean, Brian Danielson coming back, uh, the Blackpool Combat Club. Obviously, I feel like they need to get back on their winning ways. Of course, they did that with Brian Danielson. And that's funny. He was the face in this one. Yeah. What, and, what, but what's, even more funny, what's even more funny <laughs> is that in the show, after Moxley won the uh, International Championship, he came out with mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. Wheeler Yuta and, and, and Claudio and, and like, Helen well, Moxley. Group. Yeah, as a group, as a group. So and it's a face. I thought, I thought that was he's a face. He's still in the group. So. He's a tweener. Yeah, he's a tweener. Yeah, tweener. He's, he's, he's a tweener. Like I said, yeah, they had and the pivot. They had the pivot because of what so. I kind of feel like I'm a I'm a big Ricky Starks guy. I love how he plays off his music, his character, even his little like you know, it's it works well for him. I feel like he's kind of in a little like um kind of MJF spot where like MJF was like in all these like top matches, you know, win some, lose a lot, but like he was still one like of the he's guys. He's still part of that. Yeah, he's still part yeah. of that. He's like the Miz. No, not in that sense. No, we don't put him there. Jesus. See, I actually compare right now, I actually compare Ricky Ricky Starks with LA Knight from the standpoint of a lot of these old timers, they see the way that they see the way that they cut promos, and they automatically think that they're not original. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you saw with, with Ricky Starks, a lot of people didn't think that Ricky Starks copies from The Rock with with with, with the way that he. I kind of got that vibe with the shirts. Yeah, I kind of got that vibe a little bit. His look, and then with LA Knight, some people think he 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 copies like, sounds like the from Rock. The Rock. He, uh, he steals from Stone Cold. He steals from Stone Cold. But what, what mm-hmm. people don't realize is, is that. <laughs> They're, they're so they're so entertain entertaining as characters that even though it may come off like they're that, that they may be mm-hmm. taking somebody else, but but they do it in their own but they do it in their own way and and, and it their comes own off way organic. exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> and that's the thing and and I hate when people say you can't do that like these guys you're are always gonna stuff. pay homage that's what you're to the to, That's what you're exactly. supposed to do. Well, everybody takes from everybody, bro. Not in the professional wrestling is original. No, <laughs> how many nothing. people? How many people are Shawn Michaels? How many people are Ric Flair? How many people are The Undertaker? Or try to do that stuff like you know, Ric Flair? Nobody, is, no, nobody can no give a kid rope anymore. Like, that being compared to Ric Flair, <laughs> everybody like, takes yeah, like, like, yeah, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't like that. I mean, as long as it's entertaining and it's getting over, like, who cares? Who cares mm-hmm. at that point? Like, who cares? Um, but yeah, that sounds like All Out was great. I'll try to watch it at some point. Uh, sure one, one watch. side note. I don't know mm-hmm. why. And maybe it's because it was a re it like refreshed my mind. Um, when I don't know why the the yeah, what are their names? Billy Gunn's kids, the the young the guns or whatever. Mm-hmm. Their intro with Bullet Club is so fire. I don't know why. And I don't know why that intro is fire. And then you got Juice Robinson over here with the glasses, like spazzing out and shit, but 
I know that their intro for when they had the tag titles and they came out to many men. I thought that was fucking yeah, hilarious. yeah, fifty cent. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was so yeah. sick. I was yeah, like, the reason why they only did that for one week. Oh yeah, <laughs> they, they're not paying residuals. <laughs> Tony Khan was like, "What? This is a one shot. Yeah, Tony Khan was like, one shot. How much How money? Much? Much? <laughs> Fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, you paid all that money for just a clean once. Oh man, like, but nah, that, that I mean, I, I haven't seen their intro. I saw the mini men entrance, but I haven't seen mm-hmm. I, I'll check out that entrance. As it's well. similar to that where they basically they're like back to back, but what they do with the bullet club is like um Jay White's in the front, Juice Robinson is the back. They're both to the sides and they go like once their music hits, they like you know, fire off the guns, but obviously it's the water from their mouths or whatever. So it just comes off pretty sick. I don't know why. I thought it was pretty cool. I'm like, that's a sick entrance. I'll check it out. I'll check it out for sure. Um, let's get into WWE Payback. 